Good morning. There we go. Welcome to the United Methodist Church of Wilton. I am Pastor Steve. And those regular members, we welcome those of you who are here possibly for the first time. And I would ask all of you, whether you've been here for 50 years or whether you're here for the first time, there is a little black book at the end of one side of the pew or the other to, uh, to pick that up. Uh, sign your name, uh, put your uh, email or address or phone number in there if, if I don't have that, and then pass it back down. Uh, if you're interested in joining, there's a spot there that says that. Uh, if you're interested, if you're a visitor, check that. If you're a longtime member, check that. So that way we can check our records to make sure that we have you down as a longtime member. Uh, and that way you can also then pass them back down the pew so you get to know who else is sitting in that pew with you. Uh, I know a lot of you sit in the same pew every single week, so you kind of think you know everybody, but you never know. There might be somebody, somebody new down there. A uh, couple of things that I want to let you know about today. Um, one of the new things that we've started, the youth came to me three weeks ago, four weeks ago, something like that, and wanted to start a youth praise band. So I said, fine, I've been doing this before. So today is their debut. They are called Youth Praise, U-T-H hyphen P-R-A-Y-Z. Um, and so they are going to be starting. So I want you to all be very encouraging. Okay, you got that? It's like um, they're a little nervous. You, you won't be able to tell because they're all going to be smiling and just jumping around like crazy. And no, they're, uh, um, But we use a thing that's called band in the hand um, when I work with youth, which basically literally means I have a device back here that I control that plays uh, performance track background music while they get to learn this stuff. Because like today, we're missing all the boys. Um, the, the, um, Josh and Zach are in Colorado on a family uh, Christmas trip, and uh, so we were missing the boys, that means we're missing the violin, we're missing drums, and uh, they're still learning the song, so we'll slowly be working our way out of the band in the hand, but the good news with that is, is that they can play, when they play, we can always add back in drums, or we can add something else back in uh, to, uh, to fill out uh, the band. So you're going to be singing um, four songs with them today, two of which you should kind of know, Come Thou Font and Solid Rock, because those are based off of traditional hymns. The other two will be brand new to almost all of you. So sing loud, sing enthusiastically. Even if you don't know the words, they'll be on the screen. Just belt them out because no one's going to keep track of that. The other thing to let you know, one of the things that have been happening over the last two months is that uh, it seemed like the whole month of November, everybody talked about how warm it was in here. People were fanning themselves because it was so warm. And then um, the month of December, everybody was like, it's so cold in here. But we've been trying to regulate the thermostat to try to figure that out. So I have, as part of my art supplies, I have this wonderful little device that uh, shoots a, a laser and then records the temperature of where you're sitting. So like Connie's seat is 70 degrees right now. And because, no, she's never, not going to go there, OK. So I've been through this week while we've had the poinsettias in here and keeping the temperature up. I've been coming in each day and recording and figuring out where the warm spots are, what the cold spots are, how to turn the thermostats up and down, and come to realize that uh, there's not really a good system because the colder it is outside, the colder the thermostat is, the more the furnace runs, the hotter it gets. That's why it was so cold in here in, in uh, November, or so warm in here in November. And then when it gets warmer, the wall is warmer, the furnace warms it up well enough, and so it shuts off earlier. Thus, it's cooler in here. Um, so be patient. And if, you, if you're curious as to what your seat is like, uh, let me know. We can come out and measure your seat. But uh, as of the beginning of this church service, every pew was 69 degrees without anybody in it. With one exception, if you're really cold, the place to sit is in the back set of chairs against the, the glass window and the first two pews back there because they're the closest to the furnace. They're at 72 degrees. So... Um, you also have to put up with, oh, if somebody opens the outside door, it gets really cold when it swings through there. So with all that information in mind, we now come to our time of praising God, of allowing the light of Christ to come into our sanctuary as we prepare on this last Sunday of 2018 to prepare our hearts, our minds, and our souls to be and to do what it is that God is calling us in 2019 to bring about his kingdom. So we're going to stand and we're going to sing the three verses of this little light of mine, learning new songs all the way through today. So let us now join together in our call to worship. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul.
Let me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth. And teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Come, let us worship the Lord. Let us take this time to greet one another with the love of Christ and with the peace of Christ. We now come to our prayer time. Ellie, here's your other job. Grab, grab braces. You, that one won't reach that far. So if you have a joy or concern, uh, raise your hand. Ellie will run the microphone out to you uh, so that everybody can uh, hear your uh, joy or concern. Um, I would ask for prayers for uh, my wife, Anne. Uh, on Christmas morning, we got a phone call from my uh, sister-in-law that Anne's brother, they thought, had a heart attack on Christmas Eve. And... Uh, had been taken to the hospital as they were getting ready to go to the Christmas Eve service. Well, come to find out that's not what it was. Uh, all the tests that they did indicated it was, but when they checked for blockage, it wasn't. And as they continued on, um, come to find out it's uh, lung cancer. Um, so yeah, it was one of those where it was like bad news and then it kept getting better because they couldn't find any blockage. And then all of a sudden it was like thump. Uh, so we're, uh, we'll be heading out there today or tomorrow to uh, Des Moines. Uh, to, uh, to see how John is uh, doing. Um, so keep, keep John Lippincott in your prayers as well as, as Anne. Um, we want to keep all those that are traveling in our prayers because there's a lot of people traveling. I know of several members of the church that I saw that are in ones in Florida, ones in Texas, and uh, uh, on vacations and celebrating the cyclones. I guess you don't celebrate their loss, but celebrate their bowl activity and uh, that time there. Are there any other concerns, joys? You're all content with 2018? That was, yeah. I know we're not really content with 2018, but it's over in two days, so. All right, at this time then, let us join together in our unison prayer as it's found on the screen, and then we'll go through a time of pastoral prayer and uh, silent prayer. Uh, the Lord's Prayer is uh, in our uh, communion service today. So let us pray. God of life, May your light shine on your people today as it's shown in each moment of history. May the light of your presence inspire this celebration and inspire our lives to praise you and recognize you as a source of all creation, as strength that sustains, as sap that nurtures, as wisdom that foresees, as clarity that discovers, as love that understands, as mercy that forgives. May the light of your presence, eternal and inexhaustible, shine on us now and forever, till the dawn of your kingdom, present in each day. Lord, I ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon those of us gathered here on this last Sunday of 2018. That as we come to celebrate, as we come to worship, as we come to remember all that you have done for us, the miracles that have happened, the pleasantries, the things that have allowed us to know that you are active in our lives, Lord, we thank you and praise you for all of those. But Lord, today we also know that there are things that are deep upon our minds and our hearts. For it is that time of year when we start to consider all that we have done in the last year and was it enough? What is it you're calling us to do in 2019? What resolutions are we going to set about for our lives so that we can be better people, that we can be better Christians, better parents, better children, better spouses? Lord, we ask that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us so that we may realize what it is that you need us to do to be better. For when we are better with you, Lord, we are better in all things. But Lord, our hearts sadden at the thought of people dealing with homelessness, those that are dealing with hunger, medical issues, those that are dealing with addictions and abuse. Lord, we ask that you reach out to them, hold them, be with them, help them to know that there is a way through you. And help us, Lord, to be that way, to lift up, to embrace, to prepare. 
Lord, we ask that you be with the members of our families and our congregation that are dealing with issues of health, cancer, recovery, upcoming surgeries, headaches, feelings of depression, feelings of anxiety, feelings, Lord, that keep us from being the joy-filled, loving people that you created. And Lord, we also ask, not for ourselves, but for this world, that you be with those who are in power, that they may listen to you, not listen to themselves, not listen to their own consciousness, not listen to their own desires of power and wealth and conquest. Lord, that they listen to you to bring about peace, justice, and mercy so that they truly may lead in a godly way, that they may be responsible for all of us, and that we may hold them responsible to do what it is that you need done in this world. And in that light, Lord, we ask that you be with our young men and women who are standing in harm's way, on war fronts, in our streets, fighting our fires, healing our sick, dealing with those who would wish to bring about injustice, terror, crime. Lord, protect them, help them, allow you to work through them to bring about kingdom justice. A peaceable kingdom, Lord, that is what we ask for on this day. But in order to do that, Lord, we have to be right with you, with each other. So, Lord, on this last Sunday of December, this last Sunday of 2018, as we come to you in a time of silence, as you come to sit with us, Lord, take our hearts, cleanse them, free them. Help us to forgive. Help us to be forgiven. Help us to bring about restitution in our lives so that we can be examples to those others. So, Lord, in this time... Listen to us. Be with us. Hold us. Hear us. Forgive us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. And Lord, we thank you in advance for all that will happen in 2019. For Lord, we are expectant for the greatness of your glory to shine through on us, in us, and through us. So Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for your life. We thank you for your conquest over death. So, Lord, we thank you and praise you in all that you've done and claim the miracle of tomorrow. Amen. Our second scripture reading today comes from Paul's letter to Colossians in the third chapter, verses 12 through 17. And I want this to be instructions for 2019. For those of us that are claiming the name of Christian, those who want to claim the name of Christian, those of us that want to live in a better way than maybe we did in 2018, or to be better examples to those around us in 2019 than what 2018 was. Because you'll all have to agree that for a lot of this world, the times that we're living in, 2018 was a little chaotic was a little confusing, was a little tense at times. And 2019 doesn't look like it could be a whole lot better. And so I'm going to talk about that and how we as Christians can prepare our hearts and our minds and our souls to be ready for next year. So here are these words from Paul. Therefore, as God's choice, that's you, holy and loved, Put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. 
be tolerant with each other. And if someone has a complaint against anyone, forgive each other. As the Lord forgave you, so also forgive each other. And over all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. The peace of Christ must control your hearts. A peace unto which you were called in one body. And be thankful people. The word of Christ must live in you richly. Teach and warn each other with all wisdom. Get this. By singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing to God with gratitude in your hearts. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Whether in speech or action. Do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus and give thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, today, as we close up our worship season, as you help us to live into 2019, as you prepare our hearts, minds, bodies, souls, our church, our community, our families, to live and to love, we ask that you be with us now. That the words that you've placed upon my heart, the souls that have been here to listen to it, and those who will hear it in the future, we ask, Lord, that it may find a spot of love. A spot that allows us to be your children. Amen. So I wanted to end this year. We've been looking at through the whole fall about what it means to be a neighbor, what it means to be in the community, and the questions and the concerns that have been upon our minds. And one of those that came up at least three or four times was, is our church prepared for February? Now, some of you that don't know what I'm talking about are like, prepared for February? February, yeah, it's a cold, icky month. There is no way to be prepared for February because it doesn't seem like you can get enough you can't put on enough clothes to be prepared for February. You can't get enough salt to put on the driveway for February. Because the minute you do all that, it turns out nice. And then you don't need any of that. What we're talking about in February is the church's turn to be chaotic. And specifically the Methodist church. At the end of February, the church is going to be meeting at a specially, what's called a specially called general conference in St. Louis. Where representatives of every conference, every district, every um, gathering of United Methodists around the world will be sending representatives to St. Louis to talk about and to discuss the future of the United Methodist Church. And they've been called to talk about one question and one question only. Will we perform marriages for LTGBQ and will we ordain those who are LTGBQ? It's the only question they can talk about. It's the only thing that is on their agenda for, um, I think it's four or five days to discuss. Something that's been discussed for multiple years, multiple, for, for about the last 20 years, for sure, in the Methodist Church, if not longer. And it's very possible, I'm going to let you know, that they could get done at the end of that five days and not know any differently than what they know now. No decision could be made. We could not, may not make a step. But I wanted you to all be aware of that because, and I will probably remind you the Sunday before this happens, because it's going to be on CNN, it's going to be on Fox, it's going to be on MSNBC, it's going to make the major news cycles um, because that's just the way society is. So with that in mind, I wanted us to be thinking with the heart of Colossians. I wanted to be preparing our souls, not just for that issue, but literally every issue that comes up, politically, socially, within our own families, within our community, possibly within our own hearts, minds, and souls of ourselves. As most of you know, the last month and a half, I've been earnestly writing my paperwork is what I call it, for ordination, for full ordination in the United Methodist Church. And this basically means I have to reflect on everything in my life. 
the past 20 years that I have been in official ministry, uh, my time in seminary, specifically my time of ministry here in Wilton and working with all of you, I have to answer questions on theology, on doctrine, on polity, on my vocational call, on my practices of ministry on a day-to-day -day basis. I have to give them a full worship service that we videotaped back in December so they can see the whole thing. Choir, praise band, prayers, concerns, joys, announcements, the whole thing gets put underneath their observation. I had to give them a full videotaped Bible study. Those of you that were at Ruth, it will be one of those uh, four sessions that uh, we filmed uh, so that they can observe whether or not I can teach or not. But the hardest part of all that is the introspection upon myself. And so I want these words today to be more about how you look at yourself, how you treat yourself, how you allow God to be in your life based on these scriptures. So I want you to hear right off the bat, right off the bat in Colossians, it says, therefore, therefore, as God's chosen, holy, and loved. That's what Paul's talking about, you. You are God's chosen. And he's calling you holy and loved. So right off the bat, no matter what else you hear me say today, I want you to know that you are God's chosen people. You are holy and loved by God. There is nothing you can do to change that. No matter how bad you think you are, no matter how bad you might be in 2019, you will always be God's holy and chosen and loved. Remember that. When things are starting to slip, or when you make a bad choice, or something doesn't quite go your way, rest assured you are God's holy, chosen, and loved. And then because of that, because God has put you up on this pedestal, pedestal above all of the other creation, above all the animals, the plants, above everything else, God wants you to act and to put on. So here is a list of stuff to put on, like clothing. You put on compassion. Compassion for one another, but also compassion for yourself. Allow yourself to love yourself. Because after all, one of the commandments was to love the Lord your God with all your mind and soul, and the second was to love your neighbor as yourself. So you can't love your neighbor adequately until you've learned to love yourself. And then put on kindness. Humility. My favorite verse, my life verse, is what does the Lord require of you, O Lord? But to do justice love mercy, and walk humbly with God. Another version talks about doing kindness instead of as mercy. So allow that to be part of your mentor, this next, your, your mantra this next year. To be kind. Kind to yourself. Spoil yourself a little bit. And then in the process of doing that, share that spoiling with somebody else. You know, when you, when you go and make or bake or cook whatever your favorite meal, invite a friend in and share it with them. Because you never know, they might do the same thing in reverse. And then you get to have a great, great meal like that. And then last of this, things to put on. Hardest one, as far as I'm concerned. Be patient. I know it's one of my issues. I am not patient with myself. I get so frustrated, so upset, so anxiety-ridden about the fact that I just didn't get it done fast enough, well enough, and good enough, that, oh my goodness, I'm just failing and I just don't have the patience to go through with it. Those of you that know and have ever watched me do artwork, most of the time I do instantaneous artwork. It's got to be within an hour because I don't have the patience to do it long term. I don't enjoy doing detail imagery. I can do it, but I'll have you know, I, you know, I just got done with one, and uh, I love doing it. I love doing it for the family that I did it for, and I love the subject that I drew. But oh my goodness, I was so tired of looking at that by the time I was done that it was like, I don't ever want to do that subject again. But, you know, I'm sure if somebody asked or I auctioned it off or something, I'll do that. But patience. So be patient with yourself. Be patient with each other. Because the one thing that God will give you is patience. The problem is in order to get patience, you have to be put in places where it will be tested. It's not just a gift that is bestowed upon you. 
And with all of that, then it says to be tolerant of each other. Which means we have to put up with one another. We have to put up with ourselves. And then the best advice in there, if you have a complaint about somebody against anyone, it doesn't say go to them. It doesn't say go to some committee and complain. It doesn't say go to their boss and complain. It doesn't say go to their parent and complain or their spouse. It says if you have a complaint about them, forgive them. Let it go. To quote my granddaughter's favorite song, just let it go. And allow God to work within you so that you can be free to move on and do as what God wants. Because the next thing is to put on love. That perfect unity. Because that is what peace will happen. Because it says that Christ wants us to control our hearts, to live completely in Christ, to completely allow ourselves to be examples of Christ's love wherever we go, whatever we do. So in 2019, as you live into God loving you, as you find yourself in instances where it's tough to be patient with yourself or with others, or where it's tough to be compassionate or forgiving, remember, first and foremost, you're chosen, you're holy, and you're loved. And with that mantle on, there is nothing that God can't do through you. Nothing. If God calls you to teach, to lead, to witness, to serve, to volunteer, to sing, remember that you chosen. You are holy. You are loved. Amen. And Jesus knew that. Knew that with his disciples. Knew that with those that he led into that time of great suffering. Into those last moments of his life on earth when he gathered his disciples around him just like we gather here today in fellowship, in worship. I'm positive that on that upper room, it wasn't just a meal. There was singing. Now, there wouldn't have been a praise band, but they were singing. There were jokes being told. It was a good family reunion. But of course, lying over that was the shadow of the cross. Always present. So Christ gathered them to give them what they needed to remember. To remember that they are chosen, that they are loved, and that God has great expectations in their holiness. So come to the Lord's table, all of you who love him. Come to the Lord's table, confess your sin. Come to the Lord's table, be at peace. We have not believed in you or trusted in your power. We have, sustained our, we have stained our souls by our action and inaction. We are broken by disease, bruised by the sins of others, weakened and unable to repair ourselves. We ignore your call to center our lives in you, and so are deaf to the hopes and cries of the poor, the sick, the needy, and the earth. When we confess our sinful ways, God abundantly pardons in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. By one spirit, we are all baptized into one body. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be always with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, holy triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is praised among all people. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with your people on earth and all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, almighty one. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. In the power of the Spirit, you created all things. Bless them, call them good. You call to yourself a people to make your mercy and truth known to all the world. We betrayed your calling. We wandered from the way. And still we turned from your ways, abused your creatures, made ourselves slaves to sin and death. At the right time you came and dwelt among us as one of us, bringing good news to the people, to the poor, healing the sick, raising the dead, sharing table with the unrighteous, and teaching the ways that lead to life. By your incarnation, life, suffering, execution, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery, and made a new covenant with us by water and the Spirit. So on the night of your betrayal, Lord Jesus, you took the bread. Blessed it. Broke it. And gave it to your disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, broken for you. Christ did the same with the cup after the supper, saying, This is the cup poured out for you. Drink this in remembrance of me. So, blessed Trinity, in remembrance of all that you have done to save us, we offer ourselves to you in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has come among us, Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ abides with us. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us. Pour out your Spirit on these gifts. Make these gifts the body and blood of Christ. Abba, Father, glory to you. Come, Lord Jesus. Glory to you. Holy Spirit, glory to you. Holy Blessed Trinity, glory to you. And now let us join in that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the United Methodist Church, all are welcome. Membership is not a requirement, nor is a confession of faith, just a desire to be closer with God. Let us give thanks. Lord, you have now set your servants free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of ours have seen the Savior whom you have prepared for all the world to see. Blessing and honor and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As so as you go from this place, as you enter into 2019, may your lives be built on solid rock so that you may not have the issues of sinking and shifting sand under your feet 
that you may go because you are chosen, you are loved, and you are holy. So go and be that to this world. Amen.